and welcome to Golf Training Hacks. So many golfers struggle with lateral glide. You know, that's gliding your hip over your rear foot or your front foot. That's never a good thing. It creates too much variability in your swing. If you're gliding over your rear foot or rolling this rear foot and gliding, of course you have to get back to impact and this movement puts more variability into your swing than you need and it's going to be tough to get back to impact consistently. So there are a lot of great drills that can help you avoid lateral glide. One being taking a chair or something and putting it next to your hip so that when you take your swing, you're not going to bump into the, the chair or whatever you're using. So you're going to rotate into this hip and extend your hip backwards and that's going to help you avoid lateral glide. The other drill, another drill would be to put, let's say a bottle cap on the outside of your foot and that's forcing you to put pressure onto the inside of your foot which is where it should be when you are going into your backswing. That's going to help you avoid rolling over that rear foot. Those are great drills, but if your hips are stiff, these drills are less effective. Now here's why. You need to get internal rotation and extension into your hip on your backswing. That's going to help you avoid that chair, that's, if that's the drill you're doing. If your hips are stuck, if you can't get this rotation. How are you going to avoid the chair? How are you going to avoid the lateral glide? Well, as you shift your weight a little bit, you're going to put too much rotation into your lumbar spine because you can't do this. So maybe you got a little bit of internal rotation. I mean, we all have some, but you're then going to end up rotating into your upper back, into your, excuse me, your lower back. Now, your lumbar spine is not designed to rotate as much as your hips, your T-spine, and your shoulders. Those three areas, hips, T-spine, and shoulders, are where you should be getting the rotation into the golf swing. If you don't have that, it's going to be really tough to make this, let's say, this chair drill effective. All you're going to be doing is putting rotation into your lumbar spine. So in this video, we want to work on the muscles, or a few of the muscles that could be inhibiting your rotation in your hips, and in particular, your internal rotation. So we're going to work on the muscles on the outside of your hip, and the adductors, which are the muscles on the inside of your hip, those two areas can be actually inhibiting or hindering your internal rotation. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to use a softball to get some release in our adductors. Now, the adductors are the muscle on the inside of your leg. A lot of muscles converge into your hips, so it's not just hip complex muscles that we want to work on to get some functional mobility in our hips. We want to work on a lot of the areas that, or a lot of the muscles that converge into your hips, and there are a lot. So in this video, we're going to use a softball and get some release here. So what you want to do is get on a re relatively hard surface, and then you're going to put the softball in, on the inside of your leg. You're going to have to work, get that position right, and then once you get that position, if you can see that softball, let me move it over a little bit, so I, you can see. Now what you're going to do is start moving your leg back and forth. Now this might be pretty tender for some people. You can see the, where the ball is. If it is, you release the pressure. If, if you feel like it, you don't feel much, you can put more pressure on it and then move your leg back and forth. And I'm breathing while I'm doing this. Inhale and exhale through your nose. Deep breath in and release. Change the position. I'm going to move it up a little higher. And same idea. You can move it a little lower and move your leg back and forth. Now I'm talking, but you should be breathing. Also, 20, 30 seconds of any release really doesn't get it done. You need to do two, three minutes or when you feel like you've made a change. So if on that spot, I was going for, you know, a minute, minute and a half, and I felt a release and it feels pretty good, well, then you can move. Then you can move to another spot 
and then do the same thing until you get a release. But you got to spend some time. All these release techniques require that you spend some time, two, three, four minutes, or until you make a change. In this video, I'll demonstrate an ITB release with a tennis ball. Now, the ITB, the iliotibial band, is a band of connective tissue that goes from beneath your knee into your hip. But it's not really a band. A band makes you think it stretches, like a, like a rubber band, but it's not, it's a strap. The, the iliotibial band does not stretch. It's, if it did stretch, it'd be a very unstable system in your leg. It's a strap, it doesn't stretch. But what you can do to release some of the tension around the ITB band is to release the tension in the muscles that are attached to it, the quadriceps, the hamstrings, and muscles in your hip. And that's what we're gonna do with this tennis ball and we're gonna work on the hip today. You can use a lacrosse ball too, but I would recommend to start with a tennis ball because it's a lot softer. So we're gonna be working on this area right here from the front portion of your hip into this area right here. You're not gonna really be going too much further than right here. We're gonna start right here. Put the ball here. Just gonna move this microphone back a little bit. Same idea. Start here. Roll around, find a spot that might be tender. Get comfortable. You can put this foot here. Put this foot here. I'm going to breathe into this spot now. Inhale and exhale twice as long, breathing in and out through your nose. Yeah, and you'll notice that depending on where you put your foot and your leg, it's going to change the feeling that you have in your hip. If you bring your hip back, cross your leg over and bring your hip back, or roll through the front, it's all going to change the position of your hip and the feeling that you have in your hip. Now I'm rolling a little bit further back here. I'll put my leg here because I think I'm feeling like that might be more effective for me. So now I'm pressing on this foot so that I can get more pressure on this leg and this hip. And I'm breathing. And now I'll find another spot. Maybe I'll roll a little bit more towards the front. So I'm, I'm putting my hip more towards the front, rolling towards that front. Go down a little bit towards the bottom of the pelvis. Maybe that you might feel more there. Change the position of your leg. Change the way your hip is oriented. Roll back. So. What you want to do is play around with the areas that might be tender. Now, this might actually be very painful, so you have to release some of the pressure by using your leg and your arm. Or maybe a tennis ball isn't enough. You could use a lacrosse ball, and you could actually use a, a foam roller to do this as well. But it's really important to begin to release the tension that you find in your hip, because a lot of people have ITB syndrome, which means that they have some pain on the lateral side beneath their knee, and to make that a little less painful, you need to release the pressure and the tension from here to here. And that means you have to work on your hip and the muscles that are attached to the IT band uh, up and down your leg. So that's a great way to get some release in the muscle in your hip, and that's also going to help with rotation. Because if this system is stiff, if this system is stiff from the bottom of your knee into your hip, clearly when you're rotating, that's going to be pulling this. And actually, anytime you're moving this way, or even walking or running when you're into flexion, this is going to get tight. So you want to begin to release some of the tension along the system. And that's going to help with rotation. And that's going to help 
relieve some of the pain if, if you're experiencing some pain on the outside portion beneath your knee. A great way to open up your adductors and work your hips at the same time is an adductor rock. Let me show you how that works. I'll show you the setup from the front. So to do an adductor rock, you want this one side out and this knee down and you're gonna rock into this side. Now, I, you can stay like this, but I use my hands to support myself because I really wanna get down into this position. This foot stays flat and pointed forward as best you can. Then you come up, you look up, and then you rock into this foot. Look up, come back, sit back as best you can, come up. Now I'll show it from the side. Okay, from the side position, this foot goes out, this knee is down, I sit back into this leg as best I can. I try to keep this foot down and point it forward, and I turn into this side. The adductor rock, it's a great way to work your hip and your adductors at the same time. So if you found that helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And don't forget to check out other videos on the channel to help you improve your movement quality and keep that youthful fluid swing while staying injury free.